up, Long Players? Welcome back to the Long Play Listening Party, the show where we go deep on local music, writing, recording, inspiration, gear, mastering, basement studios, and whatever else sounds good to us. I'm Howie Howard from Mr. Furious Records, joined by my co-host, Nate Holt, Astrology's Music. What's going on, Nate? What is good with everyone? What is good indeed? And guest, Brent Claybaugh out of Lincoln, Nebraska. What's going on, Brent? <laughs> It's, it's, it's good to be here, guys. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, and welcome to, to the you, show. Man. My pleasure entirely. Uh, I've watched the show and, uh, you know, this is this is this is a dream to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. For, well, that's that's thanks high for, praise. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yes. flatter us. Truly. Flatter. Though. Truly. So let's. Um, in a minute, I want to go back to the beginning, but Nate, maybe do you want to introduce Brent a little bit and your your collaboration and the stuff you've worked on by way sure. of introduction? Yeah, so uh, Brent, um, he was a Lawrence resident for quite a while um, back in the day. Um, and I know a couple people that I'm friends with knew him. I don't know if we uh, had any... Uh, hangouts or anything but uh anyway he's a good friend of Corey phillips who uh i play in a band with called the band of white uh we took a mini tour up through nebraska um and brent was kind enough to host us for at least a couple nights if not all three nights maybe but um he just the uh, most gracious host, um, nicest person, and uh, he has pretty much a uh, I don't know uh, just it, it, such a nice basement full of uh, incredible uh, musical gear that makes you just want to track there for however long it takes to <laughs> to get cool stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't. I won't speak too much for you, Brent. But uh, I think what you really want to do is just, you know, keep uh, drumming up business and uh, um, you know, mastering, mixing. Um, I worked with him for the Semper Veritas EP that's coming out in May. Uh, it's just an electronic project uh, myself and Kirsten Paladin wonderful singer talented musician uh but what uh i did was have brent uh master the mixes i made to tape and it was uh yeah i was just completely yeah it was it sounds so good um that's i say so myself that's probably subjective but um and yeah, you, you you're you're the one that matters to as the artist. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but so, I mean, just just uh, yes. you know, yeah. very enthusiastic, very um, you know, cared about you know how it sounded. You know, would do you know three, four, five different mixes just to kind of see if there's something better. And um, yeah, I I couldn't be more uh, thankful and uh, grateful. Uh, for that and uh, just knowing someone else that's a really good person very cool very um, yeah just on the level man so um, that's that's nice. my intro for Brent uh, nice nice <laughs> Lord. so let's Brent why don't you take us back then I'm sure I'm I'm guessing it's a long and winding path to this moment in your musical experience but why don't you give us the the three minute version start at the beginning what are your first memories of music what's the first music you were involved in and then give us the three minute version up to what you're doing today okay uh well my uncle dusty uh he owned a record store when i grew up in Kearney, nebraska and in grand island nebraska and uh, so some of my earliest memories are going into the record store, uh, smelling some 
Nog Champa and seeing the Vaglo posters and the LPs and racks of LPs and CDs and uh, T-shirts and posters, uh, rock and roll, everything. Um, that's what really got me. That's what that, and then having the collections of music around, and you know, everyone in the family had good LPs because they would get them right at the family record store, you know. And uh, so, music was at least listening to LPs it was just everywhere when I grew up uh, in that record store. Um, that that really got me because. I could see that, you know, you could have a, a business mm -hmm. uh, with music, you know, and that people needed it, you know, and wanted it, you know. Um, and so I was convinced from an early age that uh, the more I could have to do with it, the, the better off that I would be. And to this day, that that in itself has never really failed me because uh, music never loses its potency and uh it's just all, and it's always been my constant companion so how did you start moving from uh listening and appreciating into being actively involved um well when i was younger I, I would always be in a band, we'd always be playing shows, and so I had a really, my, well, be, even before that, I took lessons, I went to college for music composition, uh, I played in symphonic band in college, um, I was always in a rock and roll band, playing shows, um, doing li little mini tours, um, and, and and so I spent a lot of those. Early Not to interrupt, Brent. I'm sorry. Uh, you were a composition major. I was a composition major for two years, right out of high school. Oh, okay. Yep. And then and then at I later KU? on. No, at Nebraska Wesleyan uh, okay. University here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Before okay. I went down to Kansas, okay. um, like that would have been like maybe. 96 95 96 i studied music composition here in at nebraska wesleyan then i moved down to lawrence in 97 late 97 i think and uh then i was enrolled by um the year 2000 at the kansas city kansas community college where i got an audio engineering de degree um, so that's actually a, a good demarcation point because before I got my audio engineering degree, I was always making the music in a band. It was, I was constantly growing my musical, uh, skills on either piano or electric guitar all the time, you know, playing a lot and learning from playing with people. But then after I got my recording degree, um, I was kind of too busy with business and finance and family and uh, then later on kids that, uh, that I switched my focus to how I could uh, be useful as an engineer and a producer and a mixer by you know really working hard to try to figure out all the different uh styles i could and the different signal paths that i that i could um to help other people um record and mix and master and not to jump ahead too much but like or not to skip over but that's what you've been doing kind of ever since right and that's what you're doing today yep yeah pretty much since 2000 i've been building a you know a recording studio and you have been through like a dozen audio interfaces and mixers and uh 
start trying out different things and seeing how what works and what doesn't. Uh, ever since then, uh, I really ramped it up um, after my father passed away in 2016. I decided I really wanted to take it to another step further and I got the large format console and the tape machines to go with it. Um, and so since 2017, my focus has really been learning the, uh, the nuts and bolts of classical analog recording and uh, how to use all the equipment uh, together, so. And that's a perfect, I know Nate wants to talk about the gear, so that's maybe a perfect transition, Nate, to, to uh, get into some gear nerd stuff. And you've got yourself muted, so you got to unmute yourself if you want to talk. Okay. Yes, I, I do. Uh, I'm not in a rush to do it, but, uh, you know, I, I've, you know, heard and, you know, had people show me, you know, examples of, you know, digital versus analog and, and you know, it's getting to the point where, you know, like Grammy winning producers will do everything in the box because they know what the tools are and how to use them. And the tools now are, you know, much, much, much better than they, than they were. So, you know, you, you get more people, you know, just mixing all the way in the box. But, um, I gotta say, it's very, very, I'm, it, there's still a lot of, uh, I'm still mystified by, you know, a lot of it, but it, uh, there's something uh, really just cool and that, that feels just, I don't know, about going in uh, console and then especially hearing the results from the, the tape masters um, and, you know, some of the, you know, the treatment that you, you apply to those. Uh, just like like the, the low end just sounds it's just kind of it's there but it, it's it's just smooth and round and um, like you know the highs are very uh, you know they're you know if they need to be quote unquote piercing they uh, as a uh, you know, stylistic choice they are but it's not it's not harsh digital type it's it's just that it, there's you know, some extra um, dimension to it that makes it very pleasant as opposed to, you know, a, a little bit, you know, a little bit aggressive. Yes. <laughs> um, but, uh... Is there a question in there? Well, uh... Well, I, apparently there was not, but, uh... Um, what was interesting to me though Brent, is you talking about how you you know acquired you know, especially some of the, the, so you how many tape machines do you have right now um well right now i i have a, a really really nice tascam four track cassette tape that i've always had uh and then i've got uh, a sony MCI JH110 stereo a quarter inch deck that I use all the time. Um, and I have a couple different input cards for it and different transformers that I can use on the input and the output of it. And then I have over here a 24 track um, JH24 that uh that i don't use often but that is ready to roll and i <laughs> always have tapes ready for whenever you know we the, so what uh, you're saying is any band that, that might be listening right now and wants to record to tape i'm ready yeah i'm get ready. ready to call yep yep i'm i'm hoping about that three hours away affordable town get some fun but if you want to, but uh, the space that you have, Brent, is, uh, it, you know, you, it's just, it's, it's funny because you, you have two children um, and, you know, you are a single father and um, just by, you know, being there and, and knowing 
you you put them first but your basement is just like it's it it, it blows me away it, i mean it blows it probably just depress everybody because i i think it's you know on par with some of the you know uh you know better studios around here i mean there's definitely good 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 studios i'm not talking about you know but you know if you live down here i would probably come to you and this is a great time to say if anyone's listening and wants to reach out to brent uh you can do so on instagram at renta center that's r-e-n-t-a-s-y-n-t-h-r no e link in the description and uh, a rent a center at gmail.com is Brent's email address. Same spelling, again, link in the show notes and description. Yeah, to add to that, I mean, you you may not have all of the gear or like, you know, two or three pieces of these really amazing pieces of gear, but you have a really, fan, you know, impressive um, set of of components and so I guess I'm you know I don't know how if you you might have other questions about it too but I kind of like to maybe if you don't mind like have a little short rundown of, of, of what you're rocking sure um well the you know the 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 console is a audience 8024 ASP with a dual layer control section that is automated. Um, It's got, all together, it has 80 channels of of I.O. that if if you need to use it creatively to get more channels. Um, And it's great. I love it. And I consider that a challenge. Oh yeah, to, to to use every channel you mean? Yes, yeah, yeah. There, it's cool. Yeah, there, there, there's because I'll forget that I can. Sometimes I'll be, I'll have a big session and I'll have all my main tracks all filled up, and I don't want to group or um, other uh, techniques to reduce track usage, and then I'll forget that I could use. Uh, bus outs or um, subgroup outputs um, to send or even subgroup inputs to track like a drum machine or something Um, but either way the console's great I still wish I had one of every console but you know that's just too much for any anybody you know I'd probably OD on consoles so I'm happy with I'm happy with this one, and then uh, then there's the two pro tape machines that I just talked about, um, and then uh, I have a large collection of analog reverbs of all types, um, a number of Sansui's and Pioneers and. I've got a whole horde of Fisher Space Expanders, and uh, I got a, some R- Vermona Retroverbs, Boss, uh, Delays, uh, Roland Space Echoes, yeah. space, space Chorus, and Space. I got a lot of Delays and Reverbs, more than I can remember. Um, and then. I've got a really nice set of focals uh, to to mix with. Uh, Which is what Warris has, or I don't, I don't think it. I don't know if it's the exact model, but Warris has focals. Yeah, and, and they've to, they're they're very nice. I like them. I like them a lot. Um, I tune the room with a sound ID reference. Um, I use headphones that are, that I can tune for a flat response. Um, if I do ever mix in the headphones, and I usually will listen to the, to the headphones once or twice 
And, and then I take them upstairs to my rec room where I've got a really, really nice subwoofer yeah. to listen to up there. Um, and then, in, as far as the control room goes, I, I have a, a handful of uh, preamps that I like, Focusrite preamps, um, uh, API preamps. Uh, I've got preamps just for ribbon microphones compressors i've got a i just got two west audio units a west audio hyperion and a west audio dion and those suckers i'm flipping out about because um they have they have you can plug them in to your your computer and they have audio uh uh, user interfaces so you can adjust them all inside of pro tools or any daw um yeah, yeah. And you save all the presets automatic recall but they're analog hardware so that's my newest purchase aside of these uh ssl uh, g bus compressor and oh, the ssl yeah. ultraviolet eq yes uh uh, and you've got some uh, uh, some lunchbox modules, is that right? Yes, those the ones I the last ones I just described are. Okay. Uh, yep, I've almost got uh, I've got fourteen of them. Fourteen spaces, so I've got a ten space lunchbox five hundred series right here <laughs> on the rack. Yeah, and then I've got a six space API one over here. Yeah. Man, that just sounds like a lot of fun. I want to go up there and I just start, like record some stuff. <laughs> yeah, I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> yeah. So I. So do, this is. I turned this is it, a. Go ahead, Brent. Oh, I turned the mic just so you could see the reverbs over here a little bit better, and the other and the SSL, uh, G bus compressor and the ultraviolet. For the uh, for the podcast listeners, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Um, so, Brent, you've got this great pile of gear. When, what do you love to do with it? When are you just in the zone? Like, what what makes you happiest musically to to accomplish with all this great stuff? Um. You know, I just, I like starting from scratch. I like starting uh, with nothing plugged in and, and then getting everything plugged in. And uh, I mean, well, I guess but I love to, I, lo I just love music. I love to make it sound good. I love to make it make me feel better or make me more excited when I listen to it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I guess technically my favorite thing is going from start and mixing it so that I can start from nothing and then, you mm -hmm. know, add just the kick drum on a track. That's probably what I, I do geek out about quite a bit, you know. And then, then I hear just the drums, you know, and bring in the bass. And then I love to bring the tr I love to bring sessions from nothing and pull them up, checking everything, making sure there's no buzzing or a bad track or a furnace sound or something, and slowly build up the mix until it's just uh, fantastic uh, Fantasia, you know? Nice. Yeah. Nice. And that gives me, I know what question I want to ask next, but I'm going to ask it next week. So um, podcast viewers... Tune in next week for uh, more with Brent and Nate. But until then, uh, this has been the Long Play Listening Party. Take care, everybody. Bye. <laughs>